And so Manhattan Unity has been a real gift to me of finding peace. And it's like the fourth Sunday of Advent is so perfect for me because it's faith, peace, love, and joy. And since this is your Christmas service, the Christ candle. And so I was guided to talk about the three wise men. And it's like it's so cool because the expression of consciousness for me operates at both a physical level, a subtle level, a causal level, and a non-dual level called God. And so, as you know, Victor and I usually come over by ourselves and Mark Thies joined us. And then we had a big laugh out of the three wise men coming from the east, traveling afar to Manhattan, Kansas. And that has been so much fun. So where do we start to talk about where will you find the three wise men this Christmas? Because it's for you to find them. Now, growing up, if you're like me, I grew up with the Christmas story, and there's three wise men that come bearing gifts, but what does that really have to do with much of anything, except on Christmas, we get lots of gifts. And in my family, it wasn't very religious, and for me, I finally got to the point with my family, I didn't feel a sense of spirituality. What I felt was a lot of greed and gluttony. And it's like, you know what? I've been looking for some connection in my life. And so, let's start with where did we get the idea for the three wise men? And it's in Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Because what do we know about kings? They are not very happy about having another king show up. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And now if we had music, there would be a doom, doom, da doom, 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 doom. <laughs> oh, please tell me where the Christ is to be born. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And of course Herod saying, uh-uh, I'm the man. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Right. <laughs> and when they heard the king, they departed, and beheld the star which they had seen in the east, went before them till it came, and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. For me, my journey of finding the wise men took me 45 years to find the wise men. And the mystery was that I found it in unity. And I found it in unity in a book that everyone should have. How many people have you know about the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary? This is a, 
I can just sit down and start with one name in the Bible and just keep going to different places and like that. It's, it's an amazing book. And so, as I railed against our celebration of the birth of the Christ, because I didn't grow up with a sense of spirituality. Very much a religion, but not a spirituality. And so when I got to Unity, the metaphysical Bible dictionary showed me where to, work, where to look for the wise men. And in here, what it says is, metaphysically, the wise men are the stored up resources of the soul, which rise to the surface when its depths are stirred by a great spiritual revelation. They are the inner realms of consciousness that, like books of life, have kept the records of past lives and held them in reserve for the great day when the soul would receive the supreme ego, Jesus. These wise men represent the wisdom that is carried within the soul from previous incarnations. The East represents the within, man's inner consciousness. They bring gifts to the Christ child, the inner resources of spirit, which are open to the Christ mind. Gold represents the riches of spirit, frankincense, the beauty of spirit, myrrh, the eternity of spirit. The star that the wise men saw in the East represents intuition. The wise men were guided by intuition. Stars represent subject and not fully understood guiding lights. And so when I went home from the last time being here, I picked up the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, looked that up, and I had such joy about reading that. It was like God guided me to that passage to be able to come back here and to share with you what a gift unity has been for me. Because that's, unity is the first place that I ever heard this idea that Christ could be inside me. All I've ever heard is God. God is both transcendent, absolutely, and imminent. God is within us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The kingdom of heaven is within. Each one of us is that. The wise men already exist within you. You've carried them with you lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And so the idea is to embrace everything that life presents us. Everything. That with the birth of Christ, see, it doesn't make any difference. We actually exist outside of time. You know, because since I like to fight about things, I'm going, now wait a minute. Was Christ really born on December 25th? And how many of you people know the answer? <laughs> he wasn't born on the 25th. He was actually born several years before we celebrate his birth. And he was probably actually born in the summer. How many people know that? He was probably born in the summer. And, and even how he was born, back then the people say, they didn't have inns, that everybody was related. And when they traveled, they stayed in people's homes. And when somebody got there first, they got the loft at, at one end of this house. And there was a, most of them lived in one-room houses. The animals and straw were at one end, and they slept at the other end. And in the middle was where they cooked and ate and did their socializing. And somebody got there first and got the loft. And so they got the straw at the end of the house where the animals were because they wouldn't turn anybody away. So it's, it's like, we made it all up. It's like, wow. And you know why the Christians would make up the, the winter solstice time? Because the Romans had multiple gods and one of their gods had a celebration during the shortest days of the year and they celebrated that the long nights were going to be ending and the sun was coming back. And the pagans had a season of lights. 
And so the Christian said, it behooves us to take over this season of lights and celebrate it as Jesus' birth. And you know what? I'm really okay with that now. I don't have to argue with the church about that because it's a season of lights. Christ coming is a season of lights. We are the light. The light is everywhere. We keep affirming that. So even in the darkness of our own souls, in the darkness, because this life is a challenge, challenging process. Going from birth to death is a challenging process. We have difficulties in life. The Buddha says that every person on this planet experiences suffering because we don't see ourselves clearly. We think that people and places and things out here are doing something to us rather than looking at the truth that we have created the people and places things that we experience. When we own and look inside, we start moving through consciousness to higher and higher levels of com consciousness, realizing that if we change our perception, we will change our lives. And the only way you change your perception is looking inside. So it's like at this season of lights is so perfect regardless of the stories. See, historically, storyteller, storytellers always change the story to fit the circumstances that the tribe was involved in. Storytellers didn't care about the facts. They wanted to tell a good story. I'm married to a good storyteller. Her father, Don's father was a writer. He said, never let the facts get in the way of a good story. And so now it's like, hey, this birth of Jesus on December 25th is a pretty good story. I can really enjoy it. And drive around and see the lights and celebrate it and have a good time with it. And where I will be on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, Don and I like to go on self-retreats. And we're going to go to, to Conception Abbey, which is a Benedictine monastery and seminary. And so on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we'll be in this minor basilica with Catholics that I used to rail against, <laughs> that I now embrace, going beyond the story, beyond the need to fight anything, embrace the miracle of 2,000 years later 2,000, 2,002 years later, 2,004 years later, who knows? But embrace this teaching of unity because over time, new groups develop, new groups come forth. And from the standpoint, just as Jesus was a cult in his time because he didn't follow the Jewish teachings, he created his own group that was called a cult. Unity is a cult. We're in pretty good company. Even though people like to use the word cult as something bad, for me it's something good. Because in unity we talk about the Christ within. Think about what we just said a few minutes ago up here. Consciousness. Consciousness evolving. Everything in this planet, in this universe, is a play of consciousness and a dance of energy. Consciousness plays out here, but it also plays out at much higher levels that express who we are at a soul and spiritual level that's beyond our understanding. What goes on in our head is the purification that needs to happen. The karma that creates this human form. The karma is fear, greed, and hatred. And what do we see on the planet? Fear, greed, and hatred. And the challenge then is to look at what is it that you believe in? What is it that's going to keep you safe? In meditation, a week ago, it came to me. I, you all might, might not have known, but I'm a very liberal person. And I take Jesus' teaching literally that if you want to serve Jesus, you serve the poor, the sick, the homeless, the people in prison. We would welcome refugees. And I was freed in meditation when I got the message, I wanted to go on Facebook and thank Donald Trump. 
This man is giving us a gift to look at ourselves to see what is it that I value. And if there's people that value bigotry, racism, sexism, prejudice against minorities, we pray for them because without the contrast of people coming from different points of view, how would we ever know ourselves? So the process of life is the gift, the muck and the mire of life, the struggles to see what is it that's really important to me. That's the gift this Christmas. That's the wise men saying, don't judge by appearances. I think Jesus said that, don't judge by appearances. Love your enemies. If you love the people that love you, what have you done any differently than anybody else? Love your enemies. See, back in my fighting days, I loved to fight George W. Bush. Yeah, And now it's like, I love the guy. Wow. I love Donald Trump. And then somebody, when I put this on Facebook, somebody said, okay, you're thinking Donald Trump. How about Sam Brownback? <laughs> For those of you in Kansas. <laughs> Whoa! I, I, <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one. We're going to have, have extra meditation on that. Wait, 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 okay. It's the same process. The, the values that they express creates the contrast for me to know what's important to me. And as Victor reminded me, I mean, this universe has been around for. 14 billion years. You know, I'm getting ready to celebrate my 70th birthday. 70 compared to 14 billion. Whoa, what do I really know? Taken in perspective. And so this really is a season of lights. Human beings have always celebrated it. It doesn't make any difference in which context they do it. This, this is the, short, the shortest days of the year. Back in medieval times, it's like, the sun has gone away. Is it going to come back? And so they put out lights. They pray to God to bring the sun back. And sure enough, it comes back. Wow, isn't that something? Live in the mystery. What is it that I really know? What do I know what is really good for us? Because the challenges, the difficulties, are the crucible of our lives that allow us to look inside to realize what's true. And the life I'm living now is 180 degrees from what I grew up with. With what I perceived as greed and gluttony. And today, there, there is faith, peace, love, and joy in my life. With Dawn, with Victor, with Mark. Gentle men in my life that I never knew existed have shown up for me. And there's such a, such a wonderful experience of this inner work over 27 years that has totally shifted my life and that I delight in Jesus Christ. And all of us can delight in the world, in the crucible of this world that brings people to know their own divinity. Because whether it's the wise men registered in your consciousness from your past lives that's ready to burst forth? Or the people that are working to find those wise men within themselves? We all have this longing in our hearts to know God. To feel that oneness with God. That's what this human world is all about. This longing of the heart to know God. And so this expression of the birth of the Christ. The new covenant. We've got the old covenant. The Old Testament and all the things that the Jews went through. But here came a new covenant with God. A new way of being. A new kingdom, not of this world. And 2,000 years later, we're still trying to find it. But it's all within each of us that it can be found. That all of us have the wise men within us. That allows us to embrace life the way it is on this planet and see that shifts in consciousness are, are always happening. And we can't see it coming. 
And if yeah, and after 69 years, if I can stop fighting with things, I know you can too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's possible. Amen. <laughs>